Namaste and good afternoon. Welcome to the recover series presented by Apollo Hospitals, Dr. Srinidhi Chidambaram here. The recover series brings to you twice a week the latest and updated information and best practices for those who have had COVID-19 so that they can recover as quickly as possible. After recovering from COVID-19, many people have been saying that they've been trying to catch up on work or exercise at their pre-COVID pace. However, they soon realize that they're unable to do so because they're getting tired a little too easily and they do have sometimes even prolonged symptoms of body pain or breathlessness or loss of appetite and so on. But these symptoms usually go away eventually. But there are some symptoms that should be monitored carefully and that should be a signal for the post-COVID patient to seek immediate medical help. This can be many things. It can be unusual chest pain or dizziness or sudden weakness on one side of the face or body and also symptoms of post-COVID infections. And one such is the post-COVID fungal infections that we have all been hearing so much about. But it is very important to recognize these symptoms so that they can be diagnosed and treated early. Many of these fungi that are supposed to cause these post-COVID fungal infections are actually found all around us. They're there in the soil, in the air, in plants, in manure, and sometimes they even are there in the mucous membrane and inside the nose of normal healthy people. But they don't affect people with normal immune systems, but in the post-COVID and other immunosuppressed or compromised scenarios, they do affect the same sinuses or the brain or the lungs, and if not caught early, can even be life-threatening. So it is very important to know all about the post-COVID fungal infections and what precautions and preventive measures that we can take to avoid them. To discuss this and enlighten us, I am very happy to welcome Dr. C. Venkata Kartikeyan from Apollo Hospitals, Chennai. He's the ENT head and neck and skull base surgeon, the clinical lead in robotic head and neck cancer surgery at both the Apollo Main and Children's Hospital and also at the Apollo Proton Cancer Hospital at Chennai. Dr. Venkata Kartikeyan has had over 22 years of experience and he has done his fellowship in neuroautology, cochlear implant, and skull base surgery in the US, training in the transoral laser surgery in UK and transoral robotic surgery in the US, and has also performed the first ever daycare robotic thyroidectomy. He's also performed the nation's first pediatric transoral robotic surgery, robotic parotidectomy, pharyngeal tumor surgery, robotic palatal tumor surgery, robotic single stage multi-level obstructive sleep apnea surgery, and is a pioneer in modified robotic supraglottic laryngectomy and robotic oropharyngeal dissection. He has also won several awards like the Professional Excellence Award in 2019 from Apollo Hospitals and is the first ENT surgeon from India under the International Fellowship Program to receive the Advanced Fellowship in Neuroautology and Skull Base Surgery from the University of Miami. Welcome Dr. Venkata Kartikeyan. I'm very happy to have you here to talk to us about the post-COVID secondary infections and fungal infections. I'm so glad that you have taken time out from your busy schedule to be here with us. Uh, over to you now, please give us a broad overview on uh, the post-COVID infections, especially the fungal, and then we'll take up some questions. Thank you for the kind introduction, ma'am. Thank you for providing this opportunity to talk about this uh, uh, invasive fungal infection, which happens uh, uh, to people who are suffering from COVID illness or re recovering out of the COVID illness. This uh, black fungus is actually a misnomer. The name is mucormycosis, which is an opportunistic fungal infection. Uh, as you rightly said, the, this fungus is uh, ubiquitous. It's everywhere in the soil, in decayed, uh, um, vegetables, fruits, uh, and uh, dusty environment. It's everywhere. The spores we inhale all the time. As long as the immunity is good, we don't have this dangerous infection. Whenever the immunity is compromised because of various reasons, most importantly, 
the diabetes mellitus with uncontrolled blood sugar and a COVID altered immunity. People who are having COVID infection, they have this uh, immune deficiency happening during the illness and during the recovery. And people who are on steroid, especially on high dose steroid for a longer duration, they are the susceptible candidates for this dangerous fungal infection called mycomycosis, uh, also known as black fungus. This is the unholy trinity of uh, COVID, diabetes mellitus, and uh, uh, steroid is a predisposing factor for this fungal infection. When the immunity is compromised, especially in the nose and paranasal sinuses, the spores, which can be normally present, and they are act like a, a saprophytic fungus, uh, become an invasive fungus when the immunity is altered. They start affecting the mucous membrane lining of the nose and sinuses. From there, it goes to the orbit. For example, the, the massive sinus lies just below the orbit. So when the fungal spore forms the hyphae and then forms the mycelium, which is a network of fungus, involves the maxillary sinus lining, it goes and starts eroding the roof of the sinus, which is the floor of the eye. So from the sinus, it goes to the eye. And when it involves the eyes, it can also, the rear door of the eye is the entry to the intracranial compartment, which is the brain. So the infection from the eye, it goes to the brain, and then can cause intracranial complications. So when it involves the nose and sinuses, we can have symptoms like uh, nasal discharge, nasal blockage, the nose block. Uh, the most common symptom would be a unilateral facial discomfort or a facial fullness and numbness, paresthesia, which means altered sensation in the uh, skin of the sinus. And you can have, we can have eye signs like uh, red eye, uh, edema of the eyes, edema of the lid or swelling of the lids, reduced eye movement. And uh, in the progressive illness, you can have loss of vision. And next stage would be the intracranial involvement. When it involves the brain, they have altered uh, co consciousness, convulsions, coma, and death. So, it's a, it's a progressive stage right from the nose and sinus involvement to the eye involvement and to the brain involvement and finally death. So this is kind of a invasive and this is dangerous because it ultimately if you don't treat it, if you don't identify it earlier, it results in death. So that's, the, that's why we need to diagnose this illness very early when it is actually involving the nose and sinuses. It can also involve the, as we said, the floor of the maxillary sinus, which is a roomy cavity between the eye and the mouth. When it involves the floor, it can also involve the teeth. So the teeth may get loosened. You can have uh, what you call uh, nodules or inflammatory nodules along the gums. And when it progresses, it can form an ulcer in the palate. To start with, it can be a reddish area. Over a period of time, it can form a black eschar, which can result in a kind of a perforation also, palatal perforation in the later stages. The black fungus is termed, the color is black because it has affinity for the blood vessel. When it involves the blood vessels, it causes thrombosis or blockage or occlusion of the blood vessels which with reduced oxygen supply, the tissues die and necros. And the necros tissue appears black. That's why we call it as a black fungus. So when it causes the, when it happens like a black or either in the mouth or inside the nose, we know that it's a mucomycosis, especially in a patient who is recovering from COVID, who has uncontrolled blood sugar, or with course intake of high dose of steroid for a longer duration. So when 
the first early diagnosis would be to take a, the ENT examination, which is very, very important, examination by an ENT specialist, looking for this early signs and uh, sending the appropriate tissue for we can either take a nasal swab, or a scrap of the nasal tissue, symptom tissue, or a biopsy to send it for fungal smear of a pathology. And also we have to check the other parameters like the blood sugar level. And uh, most important is the imaging where we do a CT scan or an MRI to know the extent of the disease. The treatment aspect, once we diagnose it, is uh, three part. One is the control of blood sugar. And uh, second will be the antifungal therapy because early institution of antifungal therapy is the key uh, element in the treatment of the successful outcome of these patients. We have to start amphetericin as early as possible. And the third most important thing is early surgical debridement. That means early surgery to remove the affected tissues. If you do all this at the survival of these patients, it's much better because in advanced disease, the, the chance of uh, mortality or death is between 50 to 80%. So the early we diagnose, early we treat, using this approach can save many lives. Uh, so, Doctor, when when would a person who has recovered from COVID expect to develop these symptoms? Like, how long should they be very watchful about it? Yeah. Uh, this can be a concurrent illness during the active COVID infection or during the recovery. When we say recovery, it's usually within four to six weeks. And what we, in our experience, what we generally see is the second to third week where they present with eye symptoms. So I think it's, it'll be very, we'll be proactive in diagnosing problems at the, even at 10 to 14 days of illness, that would be the ideal window to diagnose and treat them early, rather than seeing them at four weeks with an advanced disease. Can it come even after like say two months or three months, or is it like, or does it depend on somebody's sugar control? Correct. Uh, what, what, what is the, I mean, they have to be watchful and keep their sugars under control always, Correct. especially during this. Exactly. I think it can happen anytime for anybody because not only in this COVID pandemic, we are seeing this mucormycosis, we are seeing for mucormycosis otherwise also. Yes. Uh, in patients with uncontrolled diabetes, uh, patients who are receiving cancer chemotherapy, uh, patients who are uh, transplant recipients, patients on high dose steroids for any indications, prolonged uh, antibiotics, or broad spectrum antibiotics, all these patients, the immunity gets altered. They're all, always at a risk of uh, mucormycosis. But in a COVID patients, when they recover four to six weeks, if the sugars are under control, and it's a kind of a preventive measure against this uh, mucormycosis. So we need to check the sugar, make sure that it's un under control. And especially hemoglobin A1C level, which indicates the uh, overall sugar control is very, very important. People with high hemoglobin A1C are more prone for this infection. So optimum control over a period of time is very, very important uh, in the prevention of the mucormycosis. So is it uh, just the mucormycosis? Because we have been hearing about uh, other fungal infections as well, which the media has termed in different colors, but could be like aspergillus or it could be candida. Uh, do they also affect the, the head and neck or do they affect other parts of the body? Correct. Right. Um, this aspergillosis is usually can affect the lungs and also the upper airways, nose and sinuses. Uh, but they can, and the yeast can affect the oral cavity, oropharynx, back of the throat, and the female uh, urogenital area. Okay. So when they are, when they happen in immunocompromised, uh, immunocompetent individuals, uh, they don't manifest uh, like the way we are seeing the mucormycosis. They are kind of uh, can be controlled and cured with medications. Uh, in lungs, it can happen. Can, the aspergillosis can happen in patients uh, suffering from bronchial asthma, 
uh, cystic fibrosis, sarcoidosis, those conditions they can present with acidulosis. In the sinuses, it can present like a chronic uh, allergic fungal sinusitis, which we commonly have operate as an ENT specialist or as a fungal ball within the sinuses, we do treat them. But this category of uh, mucomycosis or sometimes invasive aspergillosis also can uh, cause a dangerous and progressive fungal infection affecting the nose sinuses, leading on to the eye and brain complication. This is a new scenario happening during this COVID. And uh, as I said, uh, proper control, taking prevention for all this risk factors I mentioned is the key uh, for a better outcome. Uh, is this uh, fungal, uh, are these fungal infections, uh, you know, I mean, are they contagious from one person to the other or is it only from the environment? Uh, the black fungus or you know, the mucomycosis, it cannot be transmitted from one person to other. It's a myth. But as I said, the spores are everywhere. Everyone inhales it. But when the immunity is less altered by COVID or the diabetes, and with high steroids, they are susceptible to get this infection. The spores becomes a high fame, mycelium, and then start invading the structures. Uh, but when we, uh, these, uh, as a preventive measure, it's always better to have a good environment surrounding us and always to wear a mask, even if the environment is not good, prevent the fungal spores uh, to go inside the nose and sinuses. Uh, so as I said, the unholy trinity favors the fungus to grow. This is a fertile soil for the fungus to grow. It's very difficult to control the entry of the fungus into our nose, but can always control the, the environment within the body to uh, not to facilitate the fungal growth uh, within the nose and sinuses. Um, you spoke about the environment uh, and the fungal spores being present everywhere. Is there some mechanism by which you know the the environment can be controlled? As in, uh, is there something that you know? For example, in malaria, we say that you know, like you know, make sure that uh, you're not. Uh, for example, in uh, dengue, they say that you know, you keep your uh, don't keep uh, water uh, stagnating everywhere. So, is there something? Because a lot of people say that you know the environment is all the decaying uh, plants or you know the is there something that people can do or it's it's just too prevalent for us to uh, do much about it a healthy environment is always helpful i think we should focus on that uh, and uh, and for especially at risk people as you said uh, diabetes poorly controlled diabetes they have to make sure the environment is uh, very healthy around them uh, a clean environment, especially uh, to avoid dusty environment and to avoid things uh, which can be possible uh, source of fungus, they need to avoid uh, water contaminated areas uh, and on also like uh, and the, the wearing a mask itself, a good mask uh, itself can prevent the fungal infection to grow. And to, as you said, the fungal spore can be from any spoiled uh, vegetables, fruits, it's better to stay away from them. So all these precautions will be really helpful. And, and the most important thing is the, the air conditioners and changing the, making the maintenance of the air conditioners very, very important to keep the filters clean. That is very, very important. Talking of filters, there was also a couple of media reports that we saw at the height of the talk about the mucomycosis that this was because of uh, improperly cleaned uh, home oxygen concentrators or the use of industrial oxygen. Is there any truth to those uh, stories that you know that that is how the muco was spreading to those people's nostrils and all that? Uh, actually, there is no evidence to that. But as I said, uh, a healthy environment with uh, more hygienic practices will always be helpful. Uh, to have to have a clean oxygen concentrator to frequently change water and more in a hygienic way is always helpful though there is no scientific uh, evidence for that and people talk about the fungal spores uh, not thriving in the water medium but uh, leaving aside that to have a follow the strict healthy hygienic practices is always a, uh, an important measure to control this fungal infection and uh, uh, is there any uh, uh, 
particular, you know, like when we talk about uh, uh, black fungus, are there any uh, uh, vaccines to to kind of avoid these, or is it just by your sugar control and the hygiene? So, uh, I think vac when you talk about the prevention of uh, black fungus and vaccine, vaccine against the COVID itself, corona itself, will be very preventive. As I said, one of this, uh, the reason we see a surge of mucormycosis in this pandemic, one of the main factor is the COVID, leaving aside diabetes, uh, uh, steroids, and other risk factors. Yes. There is definitely an evidence that post-COVID, these people are getting mucormycosis. So when we vaccinate ourselves against COVID, we it's are protecting awesome. ourselves against the uh, mucormycosis as well. Absolutely. Uh, there was also quite a lot of interest uh, earlier uh, because we get a lot of these trending topics coming on social media. People read it on WhatsApp. Uh, it was about the steaming and gargling and all that uh, to prevent COVID. And there was also some talk that, you know, regularly steaming, uh, would help also in eradicating the fungal spores, uh, leading to a pe lot of people overdoing it, really, you know, doing it the whole day and so on. So what would your advice be on that? I, I don't, I think um, that would be a kind of uh, myth when you say over steaming will prevent uh, mucormycosis. In fact, uh, when you do overdo anything, it can injure the lining of the nose and sinuses, the mucous membrane, and uh, we are making that uh, it's like a trigger of damaging the mucous membrane. A healthy mucous membrane being damaged by the heat. Uh, we don't want that. Anything in optimal uh, condition should be fine. I think we should not overdo that. And there is no scientific evidence for that too. Uh, doctor, now we are getting a couple of questions from our Facebook live feed. So I'd like to read them out to you one by one and I request you to please give your answer. Um, yeah, the first one is, uh, why are we seeing a surge in mucormycosis cases? But this is something that I also wanted to ask. For instance, in the first wave, uh, we did not hear so much about it. So is there any particular reason or is it because of any variation in the COVID virus itself uh, that we are suddenly talking about fungal infections this time? Yeah, I think it's an interesting uh, area to do a research and people are coming out with studies and... Uh, the more we come to know about the, the virus and its mutants and the immune alteration it causes in the body, I think that's going to give the answer to this question. Uh, yes, uh, we saw a surge of uh, mucormycosis in the second wave. Uh, we are not sure whether to uh, ascertain this to a mutant of this uh, COVID or a different form of COVID or what immune change is happening at this point in time. Uh, in the second year as compared to the first wave, we'll answer that question. Um, this is about COVID itself. So there is a common question that are the vaccines effective against the new Delta Plus variant? Uh, yeah, are the vaccines uh, yeah, safe? Against, effective vaccine, generally, vaccine, any vaccine against COVID corona uh, should act against this uh, to prevent uh, mucormycosis. Uh, in general, all the, I think we don't know about the immune changes happening within the local immunity, within the, the nose and paranasal sinuses in particular. Uh, but general precautions uh, against COVID and the uh, precaution we need, like a COVID uh, safe precaution, what we take and the vaccination will definitely prevent uh, mycosis despite the variant. What is the yellow fungus? Is it dangerous? I think that there is always a, a confusion created uh, with uh, with the colors. Uh, for for example, they say black fungus, yellow fungus, white fungus, and now I saw this green fungus. Is actually uh, it's a confusion, create more confusion and chaos. And especially in people who are already afraid about this uh, dangerous infection. Uh, the black fungus, as I said, is the one we need to really worry about in this COVID, which is mucormycosis. The, the yellow fungus infection, what we generally see is the, what say is the candida, which can affect the oral cavity, mouth, and back of the throat, 
uh, and also the female urogenital area and also the skin. Uh, sometimes it can be, uh, it is in patients who are in ICUs on ventilators, a severe candidal infection, systemic candidal infection can be a life threatening. Um, but that too, we generally see that not particularly in this COVID situation. Anybody who is immunocompromised, again, with all the risk factors I mentioned, they can develop that. Uh, the, the, the white fungus, what I'm talking about, is the yellow fungus is when it's kind of, when you see the secretions becomes yellow, it can be because of the secondary bacterial infection. As I said, the mucomycosis can involve the nose and sinuses. When it involves the nose and sinuses, there is an alteration, there is slough, there can be secretion, there can be super added secondary bacterial infection, which can form a lowest discharge, and they call it an independent sent for tissue of a diagnosis to microbiology and pathology. They found the mucomycosis and they call it as a yellow fungus. And it depends on the this, uh, color, what they see at the time of surgery, they call that a uh, fungus. But to avoid call all the confusion, we have to consider invasive fungal infections as a category and not focusing on the color. Uh, my nephew, aged 42, diabetic, is undergoing treatment for mucomycosis of the brain. Since May 17th, what are the chances of his recovery? Okay. Uh, much about the the infracranial infection, it goes to the brain. Um, it is a, we have, it's a very guarded prognosis, which means uh, the, it's very, very life-threatening. So we have to depend on, because we can't, as, as I said, in the treatment approach, we can control the sugar, we can give amphotericin, and in this case, we cannot debride all the fungal tissue because it is involving the brain. We cannot remove the part of the brain which is involved also. And the risk attendant complications associated with such a morbid surgery. Uh, so we have to depend on, the recovery depends on the response to the amphotericin. We need to hope uh, for a better recovery. We do hope that uh, he recovers well. Uh, can the face masks harbor the, the black fungus? This is uh, another question which people also ask because sometimes people exercise with their masks and there's a lot of dampness. Can that be a breeding ground for the fungus? So that I think is the reason for this question also about face masks harboring the fungus. There is no evidence to that, scientific evidence to that. But uh, so maintaining and following a hygienic way in all the uh, things we do in our life will be very helpful. I think uh, we should not use the mask for a prolonged period. Okay. If it is dirty, we should change it. We should follow the common uh, logical uh, way of dealing with the mask and other methods. Uh, I have recovered from COVID on April 19th, and now I'm seeing some round blood-colored marks inside the mouth. Is it mucomycosis? No, you need to see an ENT specialist to know exactly what is happening there. You need to contact the doctor. Uh, it's, when I say black in the palate or the mouth, you see an alteration or with the uh, with surrounding kind of uh, normal area and the alteration can be uh, can lead to a perforation also small black papules and black discoloration can also occur in normal situations so you need to consult the doctor uh, for your this seems to be more like a blood colored mark so possibly something like an ulcer so not black oh okay okay then definitely you need to see a doctor as early as possible to make sure yeah. It's not black. Uh, I, I recovered from COVID last week and now I have both eyes are paining. Is it an early symptom of black fungus? The eye symptoms, so we need to be very careful. If you don't have any other explanation for that eye discomfort, definitely you should seek a, uh, advice from a specialist. Yes. Uh, after COVID, my platelets have reduced to 1.17 as against the minimum of 1.59 to 4 lakhs. Is this condition normal? I think uh, we need to check with your physician or a hematologist 
to make sure that uh, the other blood parameters are also fine. Is there a progressive uh, reduction in the Thank blood cell you. count? So you need to consult your physician regarding this. I think in all these things, I think the wisest thing would be that, you know, they have a physician who's been treating them and I think they should keep in regular touch with them and even the slightest doubts I'm sure can be clarified and better they check out, better be safe than sorry, I think, in most of these instances. I have recovered from COVID on 17th May. I was treated with a high dose of steroid. My sugar level is also a little on the higher side. It is almost 45 days since my recovery. So I want to know if I'm still susceptible to the black fungus. Yeah, considering the risk factors I mentioned, um, we need to take precautions. Uh, the signs, early signs, what I described, if there's any nasal discomfort, a uh, nose block or a blood stain discharge or a facial fullness on one side, numbness on one side or any eye signs like uh, lid swelling, redness, reduction in eye movement or any teeth symptoms or a discomfort in the teeth, one, one side of the uh, palate, definitely you need to seek a medical advice from a specialist. Um, this is just a gentle question. After how many days uh, can a corona recovered person have the first dose of vaccine? I think you should consult your, again, a physician or infectious disease who has treated you during the COVID time because they know the, uh, the blood test and the report and the general outcome, other associated problems. So definitely you need to uh, seek this uh, uh, treatment of your the treated of uh, who the specialist who treated you. So that uh, brings us to the end of the questions, Doctor. Uh, thank you so much for being here and patiently answering all the questions, especially about the post-COVID fungal infections. It was extremely illuminating, and I I think it's very important that you have conveyed conveyed this message that. People should be very, very alert, especially if they have these risk factors of steroid use and uh, uncontrolled sugar levels. Uh, I think this is very important and I'm so glad that you were able to share all this information and knowledge with them. Viewers, I hope you also found the session informative and please do uh, ask questions if you have any clarifications on our FB page or uh, you can also post uh, your messages on the inbox. Uh, please also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get the latest updates and information. And the next session will be uh, on uh, in the coming Tuesday, which will be uh, 5th July at the same time. And we're going to talk some more about the healthy diet uh, post COVID-19 infection. And this is going to be discussed by Dr. Kajal Pandya, uh, from Apollo Hospitals, Delhi. Uh, till then, take care, be safe, and don't forget SMS, which is the sanitizing, the social distancing, and wearing the mask. Now, with most of the country being opened up, this is the time to be more and more careful and alert. And also, don't forget the five Ws of COVID-19. Follow all the precautions. What are the precautions? We know already, which is the COVID-appropriate behavior. When, every time, where, everywhere and who should follow it, everyone, and why definitely to curb and make sure that you don't get COVID-19. Take care, be safe, and namaste.